I'm going to um, show you now the outer reorder option, which has changed a little bit in the version 2, but uh, is still quite useful. And one thing that we had to change in the past, once you reordered your nodes in version 1.6, they basically accepted those positions and the reordering became the new positions. In version 2, you have two buffers of positions. That means if I press Control R, which is the reorder mode, if I press it once, it actually goes, these are my, this is the buffer of my custom position, so I can place these nodes wherever I want. If I press Control R, they're going to be reordered according to the current reorder pattern. And if I press Control R again to toggle back, I get my custom positions again. So I can go back and forth between the two and I'm uh, getting uh, two different layouts. Potentially, we could implement even more custom layouts, but right now we feel that one is enough and one basically sets the positions according to a certain sorting logic and you can swap back and forth between the two. If you want to set your uh, custom positions, that means this buffer, to the automatically reordered uh, state, you press Control shift r and this now accepts this position, so switching back and forth between Control r uh, automatic mode and manual mode doesn't give you any difference, but if you uh, are in the automatic reorder mode and move a node and then switch back and forth, that doesn't really stick you have to be in non-automatic reorder mode. Now you can re move this node somewhere and then you can switch back and forth again between the automatically sorted and the manual placement. We have a special mode which is called inputs on the left that was added recently. I think it was added in the genome editor and now it's also in Krakatoa uh, in the Max version, uh, Krakatoa MX. You can press Shift, Control, and L, and this is going to put the input nodes on the left uh, border of the editor. This allows you to um, ignore all the operators that are currently in the uh, editing area and uh, figure out what are the actual inputs at the current level, so you can go and tweak them or expose them to the user interface. We're going to look at this a little bit later because it has some implications for working with very large flows that are difficult to um, read. And uh, even though the nodes are colored specifically, specifically the input nodes are very easy to distinguish from the operators, it's still sometimes difficult to hunt for specific input that controls some property. About the uh, nodes layout, um, we have the display options as mentioned, which are always available in the command panel and uh, you can uh, customize them. So if I want my nodes to be, for example, larger or smaller, I can change this uh, number and uh, I can set it to be the default for the next editor that will open. I can change the size of my depot nodes. Um, I can change the grid spacing, whether the nodes will be cast in shadows or not, whether the depot will be transparent or not. This is also relatively new and was requested by people that use the DAX scheme of Max because transparent nodes actually become rather invisible since the text is black on DAC background. And you can uh, customize all the colors of all the nodes, but I would suggest that you probably keep them as default so you can uh, communicate with other people and when you're talking about the green nodes and the blue nodes, you actually mean the same. The node colors are selected by us in a specific way, so when you look at the flow, you immediately recognize what are operators and what are inputs and what are outputs. As you probably noticed, the output is currently uh, by default set to green and not only that, the outputs are always stuck in the uh, corner and on the right border. If I add more outputs, they are going to be uh, on the right side. I'm going to disable this one and disable this one and disable this one so the flow uh, still works. But they are um, always green and don't pan and zoom. So they're not even reflected in the navigator. 
and uh, are very easy to see uh, what channels you're writing to. And uh, if you update, the name of the modifier is going to be changed to the first three letters of each channel. So I have color, position, density, and selection actually reflected in the name of the modifier. Then we have the uh, inputs, which have various colors. Uh, and if you look at the input category, each input has a different shade. Uh, this way, it's relatively easy to spot them in a flow. And all the operators tend to be a shade of orange. Those shades are eventually uh, slightly different. But um, as you can see, the functions are slightly different shade of orange than, for example, the convert or the arithmetic operators. But in general, you um, see orange, you assume that is most probably an operator. Except for the object nodes, which are a shade of red. They're reddish, and when you look at the flow, you can immediately spot all the intersect rays and nearest points and uh, particle sampling operators and so on. So we want to keep them slightly different than all the uh, general purpose uh, operators. Unconnected nodes, as you can see here, are dimmed. So, for example, if I add another multiply node to the scene, and, okay, that was an add, but I'll add another multiply here on the side. They are all from the arithmetic group, and if I disable this one, you're going to see that this unconnected node is slightly darker than the connected one. That means this guy doesn't have an output, no connection. In this case, has no connection to an output socket of... Uh, the flow, which is the this, uh, let's say, output position node. If I uh, connect it, it um, becomes the same color that uh, lights up. Um, so let me uh, disable this uh, link, and uh, at this point, it gets darker again. And this one is not only disconnected, it's also not enabled, and it's even darker. So the color tells you if a node is actually active or not, and if it's connected or not. The placement of unconnected nodes is uh, customizable when you're using the reorder option. Um, for example, um, I have here flow, and I'm going to add another uh, operator just to have uh, a little bit longer flow. I'll add some other vector to it. And you notice that this node started moving down, and I can continue growing my flow, and they will be moving uh, further. These nodes are not connected to anything, so in order to place them somewhere, we order them at the bottom of the actual connected flow. But we have an option that says unconnected nodes can be also placed on the left side. So if you want to keep uh, this area free, for example, if the depot is underneath and you want uh, your unconnected nodes to always sort on the left side so they're not in the way, you can put them there. If you put your depot on the left, then it might be a better idea to actually sort the unconnected nodes at the bottom. Um, when uh, the reorder uh, mode is disabled, though, uh, they will be uh, appearing wherever they were placed. So this flow wasn't ever ordered in a, a custom way, so it's a little bit out of the place. But these nodes, when Control R is pressed again, go un underneath or just take their custom positions like any other node. So in manual mode, no, no automatic sorting, they don't really go uh, to a specific location, they stay where you place them. There is also the option to quickly select the unconnected nodes, it's Control U, or you can go to the Edit menu and there are some options for selecting and so on, and there is the option that says Select Unconnected Nodes. So if I press Control U or use that option, all the nodes that are currently not playing any role within the flow will be selected, and that allows me very easily to delete them. Um, so if you're using them as uh, building blocks, more or less, you create some nodes that are not connected yet, or disconnect them over time and so on, and then you're done with your flow, uh, the magma modifier works great, and you have those uh, leftovers from the process that you haven't deleted yet, you can press Control U, delete key, and they're gone. The auto and update buttons, uh, we mentioned them when we were looking uh, at the uh, general user interface of the MagmaFlow. Um, the auto button enables a mode where everything works interactively.
effectively. I'm going to close the genome here, and I'm going to start tweaking this value, I'll expose it even to the user interface. And if I change this value, the colors are immediately reflected, all the changes are seen in the scene. If I have the auto off, I can change this value and uh, the modifier doesn't really update. That means if you have a really slow and really huge flow, I can potentially show you a little bit later one that is relatively complicated and it takes uh, uh, almost a second to update. And spinner in a spinner with a one second update per each uh, uh, change would be actually really uncomfortable. Um, this is why we recommend when you have a very complex load that is not completely uh, real time uh, to disable the auto option because each time you add a node or spin a spinner or connect nodes and so on, the modifier is otherwise going to update automatically and that's going to slow down your workflow. Uh, you can always press the update button whenever you make a change. So if I go here to zero and hit the update button, I get the changes, then I uh, increase the spinner and then press update and it updates again, but it doesn't do it while I'm spinning. So that's relatively uh, useful to um, employ whenever you are working on really complex flows. I'm going to go quickly through the node categories and the depot, and then we'll stop using the depot and look at the fast way to actually work with Magma. But for new users, it's probably good to know that the depot is there and everything is in plain sight. So the first thing that you have to know is the depot is optional. You can turn it off and uh, get a little bit more of editing space, and that's the way I would work normally because I don't really use the depot. Uh, if you want to bring it back, the depot is display options also exposed to the uh, menu. So from the menu you can go and say, okay, I want all my uh, nodes to be on the left or I want them. Now you can right click on the existing depot and put them at the bottom or you can put them in the roll-up mode at the bottom. The roll-up mode, when you click on a category, it expands the nodes that belong to that category. In the regular uh, bottom mode, when you expand the category, it expands to the side. So you get in a big block of uh, nodes. And uh, if you hold shift and click on any of the categories, it's going to expand all the existing categories. And you can still see the title, but you can even disable that. You can say, I don't want to see the deeper category names. And I don't want to see the subcategories of Black Ops. So I'm going to disable those two. And this is the complete depot, every single node that exists in Magma at a glance. You can go and put them on the left if you want. And um, if you're reordering, they are trying to stay away from, from the depot as much as possible. But in some cases, obviously, they're going to go under the depot. Um, this way, if you are starting with uh, a magma, you can actually see all the nodes all the time and you can drag uh, and they will stay open. Uh, currently, um, for example, let's say that I want to add another multiply node. I go, I can grab this and drag it over there and it inserts in the flow and my depot stays. Um, so, um, I wanted to say that you can also increase the size of the depot if you want to read all the names because they fit much better in a, a width of 100, but uh, typically we keep it at 80 as default in order to fit more in the horizontal mode. Um, another thing you can do, if you switch to the roll-up mode, uh, in this mode you get the categories anyway, uh, so um, there is uh, the options whether to display the categories or not don't really play a role and you can still uh, hit shift and click on a title in order to expand them but in this case if I have an operator and drag it in uh, the whole depot collapses automatically so each time you drag a note it closes itself you can disable this by saying I don't want to collapse auto collapse categories and drag and drop I can disable that I can press shift and click once and then I have all my operators there and I can drag operators from here and so the depot will stay there with all the categories um, and I can um, just build my flow from there. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you change your mind while dragging, for example I grab this intersect ray 
start dragging it up to create, and then I realize that I don't want to do that. I can just bring it down underneath the location where it started from, or even below the depot. So if you do this, it actually cancels. If you release here, it will create. If you release here, it will cancel. Okay. Uh, we also have uh, uh, shift and control collapses all the nodes, so I don't have to click all of them. So shift expands and shift and control click uh, collapses. If you press uh, control while clicking, the, the uh, categories will stay open, so I can open a bunch of those. And uh, if you are normally clicking, the, the others are collapsed and just the one remains open. Um, I'll go quickly through the categories just to explain what's where, and uh, then we'll start creating nodes uh, the fast way. Uh, the arithmetic has most of the mathematical operations, and we have some uh, fast keyboard shortcuts for them, so you rarely actually drag anything from here. The blob contains uh, nodes that are actual compound objects, I mean compound nodes, and uh, you create them and you can save them to disk, or you can download them from the internet, from other people. Uh, there are collections of interconnected nodes that do a specific function, and uh, you can have subcategories, subfolders, uh, which uh, will um, appear in this case if I enable the display of the subcategories. Clicking on the blob category also expands a bunch of other categories with more operators in them. The convert uh, converts uh, value types uh, between, let's say, floats and uh, vectors and integers, and uh, also um, getting components of a vector like the x, y, or z, uh, transforming vectors uh, to converting vectors to quotes, and so on. Functions take some input and produce an output based on it which is typically noise, and uh, the curve control, which remaps a value to another value, uh, clamps values uh, between uh, two specified um, min and max values, and the blend, uh, which takes uh, 0 to 1 uh, input value and blends two other values uh, together, for example, to colors or to floats. Uh, input provides access to all the uh, input channels, input values, texture maps, scripts, particles, objects, and geometry in the scene or within the magma modifier, and they are kind of a special case of operator. Uh, the logic operators do the Boolean operations, and we have a uh, switch, which is an if statement, and the mux, which is kind of a case, plus all the typical Boolean greater than and less than and equal and so on. We operate on integers when using Booleans, so you can pass an integer value, and if it's zero, it's false, and if it's not zero, it's true. We have the objects category where we have all the uh, um, query nodes for accessing mesh information, particle information, uh, element information, and so on. The element stuff is actually new from Genome, uh, and it's in the latest version of Cryptoa, so you can do some new tricks with it. Um, the system category currently contains only the output node and the elbow. We'll, we're going to talk about both of them in a minute. We have the transform category, which contains uh, all the transformation matrix operations, like converting from one space to another, uh, from object to world space, from world space to object space, into camera space and from camera space, and transforming the quaternion, so I can take a vector and rotate it. Uh, the trigonom trigonometry uh, category contains uh, the, tip of the usual suspects, uh, sine and cosine and uh, tangent and so on, and uh, this is the only category that has actually has um, duplicated first letter to another category, so transform and trigonometry have the same first letter, and when we start later using keyboard shortcuts to access them, uh, T accesses the transform and R goes to the trigonometry, so we use the second letter of, of the name, that's one special casing. And the last category is the vector operations, where we get uh, dot product and cross product and uh, uh, normalize vector, magnitude of a vector, uh, component sum and uh, matrix movec, uh, kind of uh, more advanced operators that you probably never use in your life. Uh, 